Can you do this? I'm driving over 80 miles per hour right now and look at my tachometer. My RPM is zero because my car's engine is completely turned off all while I'm driving and I'm going pretty fast. As you can see on the right side, my MPG gas consumption is blowing up like crazy. Actually, I'm wasting zero gas right now and zero money. Have you ever seen anything like this before? How crazy is that? Can you drive a car while it's turned off? So you wouldn't waste any gas? Also in today's video I'm gonna do something new. I'm gonna pick one of the frequently asked questions in the comment section and answer it at the end of this video. So make sure to stick around to the end. So, can you drive a car while it's turned off, so you wouldn't waste any gas? On older cars it used to be very easy. The car used to be just a big piece of metal with four wheels underneath and a stick shift right in the middle. So it used to be possible, especially when you go downhill. But nowadays, if you turn off the car while you drive, you're gonna be in a world of trouble you would immediately lose your power brakes, power steering, transmissions, all your computers will be gone and you would lose control of your car in a few seconds. No matter what you do, do not turn off your car while driving. Fortunately, right now, some cars offer you the ability to glide without turning your vehicle off. But before I continue, let me explain what I mean. Let's take a look at birds. In order to take off the ground, the bird has to generate serious effort. Especially when you have such an overweight passenger like this one. It has to do a lot of wings flapping, a lot of it. And spend a lot of energy gaining the speed and climbing the height it needs. Cut. Anyway. So once the bird has enough acceleration, it has to slow down. Whoa, I'm too far right now. Let's not go crazy over here. At that point, the bird can take a rest by catching the wind and then it starts gliding. Something like that. So while the bird is gliding, it doesn't waste any energy. It doesn't do any work. That's why birds can fly far away, because they can rest, they can glide, and they spend zero energy. Now let's go back to the car. The same as bird, the vehicle has to generate enough power to take off. It has to spend a lot of energy to gain the speed. And same as the bird, once your car generated enough power, it doesn't need to go faster anymore. But here is the problem. Unlike the bird, the car will continue producing more and more power, wasting more and more gas, even though it doesn't really need it. Now, what if the car could glide in the same manner as a bird? then your car wouldn't need to do any work. What it means, you would spend zero gas and zero money. The case is closed. Whew. But here is the bad news. Not a lot of cars offer this feature. And most people who have it don't even use it. You know why? Because they don't even know about it. You may be one of them. 
but the good news you are watching this channel and I'm about to reveal a secret by showing you how to do it this is only for people who watch this channel so don't tell anyone coming up First, let's restart the trip computer by selecting yes on the after reset menu so you can see what's going on. Now you can see that I drove 0 miles and 0 hours after the reset. Also you'll see my average MPG and average speed. I'll show you all the measurements when I finish this demo drive. On the multimedia screen on the right I'll go to the info screen. Here I can select the vehicle menu, for example, to see the pressure currently applied to the accelerator or brake pedals. As you can see, I'm not using an accelerator and just applying 3% of my foot pressure to the brake pedal, holding this car from moving. Let's move to the engine menu. Here you can monitor the engine's torque, pressure, horsepower, as well as the battery voltage. Finally, the consumption menu will display the real-time miles per gallon MPG as we drive. But first, I want you to concentrate on the engine menu. Let's do a short drive so you can see how it works. I'm gonna step on the gas a little to build some torque. As you can see on the right screen, the way I pointed my cameras is to make sure all the obstructions are eliminated. So the steering wheel is out of the way as well as all the blocking buttons and other objects. So you can see both screens clearly during my test drive. My RPM is going up and you can see my speed around 40 miles per hour. So even when I don't hit the gas pedal and there is minimal horsepower, I'm still wasting a lot of gas with an average MPG of around 13 miles per gallon, as you can see. So let's make a quick stop. In order to activate a glide mode, you have to go into the Dynamic Select program to change the driving mode. You can switch Eco, Comfort, Sport, Individual and other models may even offer you more programs. If you want to learn more about the Mercedes Dynamic Select feature, you can watch my other video, where I go into the details about it. You can watch it by clicking the link below in the description area. The Mercedes Glide mode works only in the Eco Drive program. So let's switch to Eco and I'll go back to the engine screen. So now you can see the letter E inside the green square right next to the transmission display of the instrument cluster. So we're all set for the Mercedes gliding to work. But before I start driving, let me explain a few things that you're about to see. First, notice that I'm in a second gear already before I even stepped my foot on the gas pedal. Normally, I would prefer to start in the first gear, not in the second. But you need to understand the Eco mode is 100% designed for fuel efficiency and not for performance. So if you want to improve the performance, as I've shown in my other videos, you need to switch to a sport mode. Eco Drive is designed purely to maximize fuel efficiency. By the way, it worked great for me when I almost ran out of gas and after switching to Eco mode, I barely managed to crawl to a gas station. If I was in a sport mode, I would definitely never make it. When I drive this car, you will need to pay attention to just a few things. First, a tachometer, when the engine is working, RPM is going up and down. But if you see RPM dropping to zero, it means the motor is completely off and not working. Secondly, if you see the transmission gear number changing to just a green colored letter D without any number, it means the car is gliding and the engine is switched off. On the top you will watch the car speed in miles per hour or People outside of the United States can watch it in kilometers per hour. In the center you can see the trip computer that I restarted, but we don't need to look at it until we finish the test drive. On the right multimedia screen you can watch the up to the minute horsepower and torque. Both will drop to zero while the vehicle is gliding. This is less important but interesting to see. The battery will stay on regardless of what's happening. 
And later in this video, I'm gonna switch to the consumption menu to watch the results of our test drive. All right, people, let's go. I'm gonna step on it to build a little pressure. And as soon as I drop the gas pedal, you'll see my RPM dropping to zero and the letter D will become green. And I'm gonna drop the gas pedal right now. Whoa, okay, let's freeze right here. Look, as I promised, the gear turned to a green letter D, the engine doesn't rotate at all and RPM is zero. Since the motor is switched off, both horsepower and torque are at zero. Even though the engine is not working, the battery still works full time like a horse. So besides the engine, everything is still powered and fully functional in the car but may not work in the full force. For example, an air conditioner will not be as cold as when the motor is switched on, but it's still functional. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm gliding right now as an eagle in the sky and it feels good. But unfortunately, it only lasted for a few seconds because this car felt a steep downhill and almost immediately disengaged the gliding. I'm gonna talk about it later in this video, but right now let's go on the normal road. I'm gonna step on it a little and watch what happens when I drop the gas pedal. I'm gonna drop it right now. Let's measure how long I'm gonna glide. The Mercedes glide mode will disengage as soon as I depress either the brake or the gas pedal. Right now, the engine is completely turned off. As I'm speaking, I don't waste any gas and I still have all my money in my bank. I have to hit the brakes because the car in front of me is stopping. I just glided for over 18 seconds and could have glided even more, but I had to stop, which canceled the glide. So now let's test it on the freeway. First, let's see how this glide mode will behave when we drive in heavy traffic. Once you get in a stop and go situation, your gliding intervals will be very short because if you keep using the brake pedal, the gliding will keep switching up. So when you're in the traffic, you have to use a different strategy. It's not how long you can glide, but how often. Regardless of how short the driving between the stops, you need to use the glide mode from 30 to 50% of your vehicle's total movement. For example, it's about 3 seconds right now, but it's about 50% of your car's total movement of 6 seconds. So then it means you are saving about 50% of your entire driving. Now I'm still in traffic, but much lighter. So this time I can go a little faster and glide a little longer. But we need to change the, our strategy because if you don't accelerate your vehicle enough, you won't glide for a long time. Almost 16 seconds and I'm already losing my power. So I have to step up. I'm gonna floor the gas a little and build a max 369 pound per foot torque. So I have a nicer takeoff this time. Still, because the traffic started to dissipate, I didn't build enough energy for my gliding to last and I'm losing the power already. So after 13 seconds, I need to step on the gas again. So this time I gave enough of acceleration to this car, even more than I need. And that's exactly what you need to do. You need to give your vehicle much more acceleration than you normally do. And now I can feel catching the wind. Wow. I'm actually moving faster than other cars, even though I'm not even driving. I'm just gliding over here. Almost 25 seconds. Nice. But I have to change the freeway now. Now I'm gonna switch to a consumption menu, so we can check it out. As you can see, the gas consumption went up and down like crazy while gliding or accelerating. But it's not very accurate because it covers the last 30 minutes, yet I drove only about two-thirds of 30 minutes. So let's switch from 30 minutes just to cover the span of the last seven and a half minutes to see a more accurate picture. Look at those huge amplitudes of going up and down. While I was gliding, MPG went up big time, and while I was accelerating, MPG went down. I just built enough speed to take an exit to another freeway, and this time I'm not gonna press any pedals since I have enough energy to glide freely. Because usually I would push a little gas and then a little brake to control my car, but now I'm not touching anything and I'm just gliding into the corner. It's almost 18 seconds now, but this ramp is going up and I'm starting to lose the power, so let me step on it. And now let's test the glide mode at high speed. 
I'm gonna go faster than you probably should just for the testing purpose. I'll climb to 90 miles per hour, which is also 145 kilometers per hour, and I'll drop the accelerator pedal. So if you look at the right of the media screen, my MPG is blowing up like crazy. I have so much of gliding power, I think I can sail all the way home. And even though I'm slowly losing my speed, I still have a lot to go. Look what happened over the span of the last seven and a half minutes. My fuel consumption shot really high every minute or so when I was gliding and then dropped to normal when I was accelerating. Have you ever seen such a roller coaster of a fuel consumption? So now I stop my car and we can take a look at some data. Over the last seven and a half minutes, I used the glide mode only a few times, but you can see those incredible results, how I managed to save some fuel while I was actually gliding. Remember, I restarted the trip computer at the beginning of my test drive. So let's stop it right now and take a look at these numbers. I drove 18 miles for 33 minutes, mostly in heavy traffic. Usually when I drive in a stop and go traffic with a full blown air conditioner, this car wastes a lot of gas. This is a big truck, the 2020 Mercedes GLS 450. I mean 13, 14 miles per gallon at best. But here I got almost 25 miles per gallon, which is absolutely unusual for this type of a car. This is nearly 100% better efficiency than I've ever got. Besides, I didn't really glide for the whole 31 minutes of my drive. I only glided a few times for this video just to show you how it works. If I really tried to glide all the way, I would easily achieve something closer to 30 miles per, per gallon or something. So this Mercedes glide mode is pretty awesome and saved me about 40% of my fuel. But I also want to talk about some drawbacks of using the eco mode. After I engaged the eco drive, actually my drive became less responsive, acceleration weaker, the transmission started shifting much faster than I would like, and both the suspension and the steering wheel got noticeably softer. Also the air conditioner did not produce as much cold as it normally does. So it's important to understand you will lose a lot of performance in the eco mode, which is designed with one single purpose, is to save gas. Eco mode puts your car in the surviving mode, but it sacrifices the performance of your vehicle. So if you care about fuel efficiency more than about performance, then go ahead and use the eco mode all the time. Although the performance will be reduced, it will still be decent. I recommend trying it to use yourself and see if you're comfortable. The glide mode is automatic, so you don't really need to watch it. Just restart the trip computer in the different drive modes and check your results out. As I've shown in my other video, you can also fix the soft steering wheel issue by setting the individual drive mode to eco. That will activate the gliding in the individual mode of the Mercedes Dynamic Select function. The link for that video is in the description below. So when is the glide mode activated? When Eco Drive program is selected, when C Drive program is selected on Mercedes Maybach models, or when individual drive program is selected and Eco setting is selected for the drive program inside the Mercedes Dynamic Select function. So there are two completely different types of Mercedes glide mode for, for the different type of vehicles. So on the latest vehicles where you have 48 volt onboard electrical system known as EQ boost technology, the engine is switched off when in glide mode completely, while all of the vehicle functions remain active. And some other Mercedes models where you don't have EQ boost technology, the glide mode actually switches your car into the neutral position. So it still saves you a lot of gas, but it's not zero. The engine is still working. However, if you have the latest Mercedes models with EQ boost technology, so while you're gliding, you're actually wasting absolutely zero gas. The Mercedes glide mode can be prevented by incline, downhill gradient, temperature, height, speed, condition of the engine, and traffic situation. So if you remember in the beginning of the video, I was trying to glide downhill and the glide mode disconnected automatically because it's too dangerous to glide while you're going down on a steep downhill. In this video, I will introduce a new segment where I will discuss some commonly asked questions that many of you asked me in the comment section below the YouTube videos. And today I'd like to address one question which keeps popping up all over the place. 
Let's take this video for example. It has a lot of views, about 740,000, about 5,700 likes and 436 comments as of right now. If you start watching this video, the first thing you'll see is me pressing the voice control Move button. The and that raised a lot of similar questions that I didn't expect. For example, here is Samia Hughes. Thanks for your feedback, MBZ Master. The voice control doesn't work at all. And then I check the media player and that doesn't also. I've now made an appointment to check with the dealership as to why. Your tips and tricks have alerted me to those. So thank you. And as you can see my answer here, probably your car doesn't have the voice control feature because it's an option and not standard equipment on some models. Here is another similar one from Citia. Chavale. I have a B180 Mercedes in Australia, it has a voice button, however it does not have voice commands. How to go about it, please? And here is another similar from Gretel Foster Boatwright. I was unable to make a phone call from my phone following directions in this video. I have a 2015 C300 and this problem is driving me crazy. Here is another similar question from Philanthropic Deed. Hi sir, I have Mercedes-Benz CLA 200 2015. When I click on voice command, it doesn't beep and nothing. So I'm not able to enjoy the voice command function. I don't know why, can you guide me? And here is another very common and very similar question, but it's a little different from Bjorn Grotnes Basso. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. How did you connect your phone to the car? I'm not able to use the steering wheel controls to talk to my phone, but this one is a little different. When I press the voice button on the steering wheel, only the navigation comes up on the screen. So again, this is part of the same problem. This car doesn't have voice control, even though this car came with the voice control button. But on some Mercedes models, you can add the navigation system installed on SD card. This navigation comes with its own voice control, which has nothing to do with Mercedes voice control. So in that case, the voice control button will work only with the navigation, but nothing else. So many people assume that if they have a voice control button, it means they have voice control in the car. And if it doesn't work, then it's broken. Well, before you spend any money trying to fix it, you need to confirm that you actually have this feature installed in your car. The voice control is optional, so it may not be part of your car, even if you have a physical button present. And here's the question of today. Have you ever used the Mercedes Wi-Fi in your car? Why or why not? I'm thinking of making a video about Mercedes Wi-Fi. There are so many questions about it, so please leave your comments below.